always silly because to me, um, you know, there's huge issues that are cropping up, but for the LGBT community, there's, there's unique issues because for about 10 years now, uh, in Bell Canada, we've been getting lots of complaints in different parts of Canada from uh, particularly gay and lesbian uh, seniors um, being, um, uh, of course, discriminated against uh, in senior citizens' homes. And there's a huge, huge problem. And we had a grant there a couple of years ago, and we just did some research on a couple of uh, Ontario, we picked Ontario, Nova Scotia, and Alberta, and just had a quick look at what's available for LGBT seniors in Canada. Absolutely nothing at the present time. Uh, people, partners are having to split for their own safety. Uh, it's just one horrific story after another, and heaven forbid if they're trans, uh, trying to um, get into a, a senior citizen's home. So we have huge, huge problems. And again, it comes down to education. Um, so that, for me, is, is a major, major, major uh, problem. Um, we're, um, as you know, with the work we're doing with education, it all came from the research that we did with the first and only, to date, um, national uh, survey on homophobia and transphobia in Canadian schools. We are now in the process of conducting a survey on, and again, we selected three provinces. I'm always pushing for a, a head move from my lab or both like that. This time we went to Nova Scotia. But we are now doing a review of what exactly, um, how can we begin to assess the senior citizens um, uh, into integrating uh, comfortably and with respect and dignity uh, their final years of their life. So once we gather that research, we're hoping we're doing a, a pilot training um, now. With, um, we've selected, I think, about seven or eight senior citizens' homes in Ontario that we're beginning to work with. Uh, we've just done uh, some, uh, we've devised a um, half a day workshop for the staff and we're, we're trying to monitor that because as you know, it, it's quite amazing when you talk about um, issues that crop up. I see it always as, as ignorance and lack of education. Um, you know, I, I um, it, it's quite amazing to me when um, uh, people in certain positions can say, well, I'm not comfortable. Well, okay, get comfortable. Yeah. I mean, like, there's no way out of that. And, and educators that are, are still telling us that I'm not comfortable talking about LGBT issues. This is the only province in Canada where our ministry is going in and saying, get comfortable. Because it's time. Park your religious beliefs out by the door. You have no right to intimidate. And you got it. <laughs> It, it, seriously, it's taken, it's, this is, um, as you know, this is a very difficult journey, and, and I heard Rebecca speaking yesterday, and uh, to be in your 30s before you can even put words to your mouth as to what and who you are is, is appalling. That's 30 years of your life that's gone, and that's happening to far too many, and um, in our schools, in our senior citizens' homes, in, in every sort of aspect. Do we still, it's funny because people think we have the right to marry in Canada and uh, we're not needed anymore. And I got on the board for Gal just as we were near bankrupt eight years ago and I know that we're needed more than ever now. Uh, if you look at Stats Canada that um, our wonderful Stephen Harper was trying to eliminate, there was a reason why. Because um, violent crime is on the increase and violent crime particularly uh, in larger cities like Vancouver and Toronto directed towards gay men trans females. That's why we, we, we just completed, uh, this is um, Courage in the Face of Hate, and, and Hillary Clinton introduces it actually. It's absolutely fabulous. It's one of our approved curriculums for high schools in, in um, Ontario and Newfoundland and Labrador, and now New Brunswick. I'm quite happy. Okay. But it just touches on um, what are some of the issues that uh, the trans community can face. For example, not only in our senior citizens' home, it's our prisons. Uh, we're just dealing with a case now of, uh, with, I'm, I'm sure, some of you Getty Gal news. I'll stop sending it out because you just don't want to get it. But we're dealing with a case where uh, a, a trans uh, female was arrested at Pearson Airport um, and treated. It's, it's, it, it upsets me beyond because it's appalling and ended up in, in, in the men's correctional facility. I mean, think about that. I mean, how to torture someone to, to death. I mean, so we've got, a, we've got training to do in, in all kinds of areas. And, and again, uh, if there's anybody here from Memorial, and I know some of you are,
please be appalled. Yes. You know, when you can do seven years in a university a program to become an MD and only spend four hours, and that's what the average is in Canada, in med school on the LGBT community, when you would need to spend, you know, a week or two on trans issues, and because trans issues are very, very different, and, and, and we've talked about being clumped together, and it's so true because that's something. I mean, that I'm came. surprised it's been any time at all. Yeah. So you know, because yeah. the last time I checked, they don't teach to non sexuality in med school, which is which is a human rights violation. Right. So it, it, you know, we, we've got a lot of work to do, but but for me right now, you know, there's so much to cover, um, but. Seniors, and we've we've got a we've got two uh, groups, uh, actually three groups, again set up in each of these um, provinces. And what we're hoping uh, that first of all we'll start training, do a pilot program, see if it's actually having an impact on on some of the LGBT seniors that are working with us in Ontario. Our staff starting to make you know uh, some some uh, progress and change, and then move it across Canada. So. I can go on and on, you've got to cut me off, but to me, um, when we think about we have it all, we've got, yeah. we lose about 500 kids a year, LGBT kids to suicide. We're just starting now. We conducted and did, um, with Ryerson two years ago, the first um, LGBT youth suicide summit. Uh, we did that for a reason. We brought in 50 experts from around North America. It was unbelievable. We just completed the second LGBT youth suicide summit with Concordia in May, it's unbelievable because there's all sorts of things coming out of that. One in particular is that now we are training, and we've trained about 500, I think, uh, coroners and medical examiners across the country because we want them to know how to start gathering statistics on if this trans person uh, was uh, dies or was murdered, uh, you know, and their youth, uh, we tend to uh, not ask the questions to get to the right answers. And so we have very little stats on, you know, what are the numbers. So we're, we're working to change all that. So it's all about again <coughs> education. And um, but uh, we do have major issues. And let's not forget. Let's not forget because you're in a school and you've got a GSA and you're out to your family and friends and everything is wonderful. Please do not forget. I'm working with three families in this province now, as we speak, that are in a major crisis because they are in homophobic and transphobic communities. They are not safe, their families are not safe, and we still have a lot of work to do. So it's not, you know, seniors are, are part of the educational process. So I'll stop there. <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs>